I think Jesus must have a special place in his heart for farmers. As he walked the fields of Palestine, he saw firsthand all the hard work that goes into the bread he spoke of so often. As a carpenter's son, I suspect he would have been especially pleased with those who actually build a church, draw up plans, build the walls, make it possible for the word to be preached and taught, a gathering place for the community. The story of the Bramer Chapel at Trinity really begins in a little white church on a hill in Idaho called Good Hope Lutheran Church. George Bramer Sr., a carpenter, had immigrated from Germany and settled in an area near an Indian reservation. George Sr. helped draw up the plans and completed the church building, Good Hope Lutheran Church, in 1898 with its altar and elevated pulpit from a solid German tradition of Lutheranism. From early on, the church had a healthy sense of mission and outreach, and they were generous with their stewardship. By the time I became pastor, Good Hope had already become a training ground for many like myself, fresh out of seminary on my first call. I learned a lot from these dear folks about commitment, about faith, and grace. I came to respect the Bramer family, especially Otto and Goldia Bramer, for whom the chapel is named. If his father was a builder, Otto Bramer was a fine leader. He and Goldia were pillars of the congregation, and Otto was active throughout the area. He served as county commissioner for years in Nez Perce County, and in his quiet way, he guided both the church and the community. Otto and Goldia's son, George, named after his grandfather, gradually took on managing and expanding the farm, and like his father, took a very active role in the Good Hope congregation. Though George had traveled more than his father and his grandfather through college and military service, he kept his sense of roots. Both George and his wife Jackie grew up on nearby farms. Jackie can still remember hearing the bells of Good Hope ring out when she was a girl. In early 2011, I sat down with George and Jackie in their living room and asked them if they could visualize a different sort of worship and creative space, one that would serve as a learning laboratory for the next generation of Christian leaders. The Bramers were impressed with the number of Trinity students who went on to ministry. Though George and Jackie had never set foot on Trinity's campus, they could see the impact this space could have, equipping people for the mission of God in the world, something near and dear to their hearts. After we talked for a while, Jackie said quietly, this would be a great way to honor your parents. George had made a promise with a friend years ago about serving the church. That friend went off to seminary while George took up the family farming business. I suspect that he and Jackie saw this as just another opportunity to live out that promise made years before, something of a legacy gift. After prayer, more talking, and time for some reflecting, George Bramer called President Reed to make an amazing statement a large quantity of grain would be delivered to Trinity as partial payment of a pledge to fund the new Bramer Chapel and creative space. Work began soon, and the chapel was ready to be used in Lent of 2012. Already this chapel has served to host lectures on mission, communion services, guest speakers from other denominations, classes, and workshops, and is a gathering place for students, staff, faculty, and guests. Jesus loved farmers. He saw in them people who understood his message and who acted. 
He saw in them people who would sow his word in ways that went far beyond their doorways and far beyond their borders. He saw in them people of good hope.